Let's do some math for fun, and this time we'll do some derivative in calculus. We are going to differentiate this expression, and you see this is the big expression. This one involves four trig functions, namely sine x, and then cosine x, and then cotangent x, and tangent x, right? This is no good. Why don't we do some change first? Let's write everything in terms of sine and cosine before we take the derivative. I think that will be a much better strategy. So, I'm just going to first keep the deviation in the front. I want to make some change inside. Right here, I will keep this as sine squared x over 1 is equal to 1 plus. For cotangent x, we will write this as cosine x over sine x. And then for the second term here, we are going to add it with on the top, we have cosine squared x over 1 plus. For tangent x, this is the same as sine x over cosine x, right? And now everything's in terms of sine and cosine. That's good. But of course, we end up with complex fractions. Let's fix that. For the first one, I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by the sine x. Okay? So this way, you will see they will cancel, and let's see what we have. In the front, we still keep the d dx symbol, meaning we still have to take the derivative later on. All right, so let's see this. Sine squared x times sine x, this is sine to the third power x over, we multiply sine x with 1, so we have sine x, and we multiply this with that, we just have cosine x, right? So this is plus cosine x. And let's do the, the second part right here with a similar way. Right here, I'm going to multiply the bottom and the top by cosine x. And in this case, on the top, we have cosine to the third power altogether over cosine x times 1, we have cosine x, and cosine x times this, we have plus sine x. This is pretty good. Why? Because the denominators are the same, right? So we can add them together. This is going to be, okay, still d, dx in the front. I'll put this all together. On the top, we have sine to the third power x plus cosine to the third power x over sine x plus cosine x. Right? The denominators are the same. And now what? Can we do something more or we have to take the derivative right here? On the top, this is sine to the third power x plus cosine to the third power x. On the bottom is sine to the first power x plus cosine to the first power x. Don't make the mistake. Don't cancel all this sine and this sine and this cosine and this cosine, right? It's not like that, right? It's calculus already. We can cancel, but we have to do it correctly. On the top, this is the sum of two cubes. And let me remind you guys the formula. Whenever we have something to the third power, let me write it as a cube plus b cube. This is going to be a plus b, right? And then we multiply by the second parenthesis will be a squared minus ab plus b squared. We have to use this formula here to factor the numerator, and then we can cancel. So right here, let me just put this down. We still have to put down d dx in the front, and on the top, a is the sine x, and b is the cosine x. To factor this out, we'll first get a plus b, namely, we'll have sine x plus cosine x, okay? And then for the second parenthesis right here, we will have a squared, namely, we will have sine squared x. So we will have sine squared x, and then minus ab, which is sine x times cosine x, right here. And then at the end, we have plus cosine squared x, like this. And then all over, sine x plus cosine x. All right, now we are in business. We can cancel this out and that out. That's cool, right? And let's see, we write this down, this is d dx, and we have sine square x minus sine x cosine x plus cosine square x right here. And should we take the derivative right here now or do something else? Look at this. This is sine square x plus cosine square x. This is equal to what? We know sine square x plus cosine square x is equal to 1, isn't it? So, this is the same as saying we are going to take the derivative. These two together is just 1. And then minus sine x times cosine x. Yes, this is it. the same as the original question. And now, 
I will differentiate this expression right here. When we take the derivative 1, we get 0, and then let me bring down the minus right here first. And we have to take the derivative of sine x times cosine x. So let me open the parentheses, and we'll put down the result right here. I'm just looking at sine x times cosine x right here. And this is the multiplication. It's a product. We have to use the product rule to do the derivative, right? So I will keep the first function, namely sine x. And then we will multiply by the derivative of the second function. The derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. And then we add the width, we keep the second function, which is cosine x. And then we multiply by the derivative of the first function. It's just sine x right here, okay, for the first function. I have the negative in the front already. The derivative of sine x is cosine x right here, okay? And now let's take a look. This is zero, doesn't matter. Let me bring down the minus. Sine x times negative sine x, that's negative sine square x. And cosine x times cosine x, that's of course plus cosine square x, like this, right? And you, you take a look carefully. The inside, we actually have a nice identity for it. But let me switch it first. I'll still keep the negative in front. Let me write this down first, which is cosine square x, and then minus sine square x. This right here is not 1. When you add, like this earlier, it is 1. But this right here, when you have cosine square x minus sine square x, this is going to give us, I will still bring the minus in the front, but all together here, by a trick identity, this is the double angle for the cosine. So we have cosine of 2x. And this right here is the answer. Negative cosine of 2x. The 2 and the x are both inside the parentheses. This is not the power. This is it. Fun, huh? Black and red.